Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. So part three of this garage slab video, we're going to talk about power troweling and how to finish the concrete. Now the first thing we do when, when we pour a garage slab and we get to the finishing process is we taper the garage doors and that's what Darren and Luke are doing right now. So there's two nine foot doors on this garage, one on each side, and they're tapering those down. I have another video that I'll, I'll pop up right on the top of the screen here that will show you how we slope those garage doors. That video is all about sloping those garage door openings. So we, we get those doors all tapered and then we edge them and then we, we mag our edges. This is a little bit, this is probably about 45 minutes, like I said before, 45 minutes after we get done pouring it, you know, when it's out in the sun like this on a 70 degree day. So the concrete's starting to dry up pretty good, but it's still just a little too soft to walk on and stop power troweling. But you don't want to wait too long to cut those doorways down, otherwise, you know, it gets really hard. If you cut them down at the right time, sloping those garage doors is pretty easy. So we're getting all our edges magged nice and flat, getting around all those anchor bolts that we put in there, filling in any little holes and gaps at just the right time. We don't want to mag the slab too early. You know, sometimes there's some bleed water on the surface. Typically we want to let that bleed water dry up, but when you're finishing a garage slab, you know, this is just all part of the process, getting your edges down first and then using the power trial there for, for the middle. So now what we're doing is we're lowering the trial down. We use what we call float blades on the power trial. So, so our power trials have finished blades that are bolted on them. And then we slide on these bigger blades. They're called float blades. And that's just the way we like to do them. A lot of power trials you'll get will have what's called combo blades or combination blades that you can you can hit the slab on this first hit. This first hit we hear, we call float. And then the remainder of the hits we call finishing hits. So we use those big float blades. And then, at, and, and because we use those because I think it's easier to take out those bolt float lines. You can see those bolt float lines in there. And it just fills in any little dimples and, and uh, levels out any tiny little humps or or dips a lot easier than if you use combo blades in my opinion you know I've used both and we just like using the float blades so that's why we use them so so Luke will float the floor like he's doing right now this is about an hour after we get done pouring it he'll get it all floated and then he'll lift that back up with a crane and just pop those float blades off and drop it back down with the finish blades on and then we'll finish power trial on the floor with the finish blades. This also, the float blades help keep the slab open. It doesn't seal the surface off. So if you have any moisture, you know, that's still trying to escape, you don't, you don't seal that moisture under the surface. And what, what that can do is that could cause a blister, which could end up, you know, delaminating the slab or you have some, some surface peeling later on. So you don't want to trap moisture under the slab, under the surface. You don't want to trap air under there. Um, a lot of garage slabs that we pour like this have air entrainment in them also because they get exposed to freeze and thaw conditions and the batch man puts a little bit of air in it. So you can see Luke's going back and forth in a pattern, kind of an east-west type of pattern here if you're looking at it, or left to right. And this is how we finish concrete. So that's going to his right is his one pass, and then he comes back to his left is what we call the finish pass. So he'll he'll bring that to the left, then he'll drop the trial down even with the bottom of that pass and go to the right. And then he'll bring it back up and go to the left and go right down the middle of both those passes. You can kind of see the pattern there on the screen. Go left, drop it down, go to the right, and bring it up into the middle of those two. And that's how we do each pass, even with the finish blades. 
So the next pass, you'll see we'll cross this pattern, we'll go like north-south, or go 90 degrees different from this pattern, and that helps level out the slab as you're power trialing it also, it helps keep it level. If you just keep going in the same pattern, you're gonna create a wavy floor. That little part in the shade too, that isn't gonna dry as fast as the part in the sun, so you, you always gotta keep an eye on the part in the sun when you're finishing concrete, especially in the summertime. So there he is, he's pulling it up, he's taking it over, he's pulling those float blades off. And now what he's doing is he's he's troweling his edges. Every time he hits the floor with a power trowel and he stops the trowel, he'll go back and he'll trowel his edges too. He's gonna trowel that garage door opening and what we do is you'll see him Eventually here, you'll see him, he's going to put a little broom finish on it and then run the edger back over it to round that front edge. By rounding the front edge on the garage door opening, it keeps that edge stronger and it's less likely to chip or, or peel off. You can see he's hand troweling all around those anchor bolts, getting them nice and smooth. You don't want to hit an anchor bolt with the power trial, that's for sure. That'll make a mess. Luke's pretty fussy with his edges. He likes them nice and smooth. You know, you, you don't want bad looking edges and then a nice looking floor. That, the edges are going to really stand out, especially to the homeowner. So you want to make sure you hit those edges multiple times, get them nice and smooth. You can see he just hit that other garage door opening. It's going to finish up that edge. And then that's probably going to be ready to trial again when he finishes that edge up. Especially that pot in the sun. You know, learning how to power trial, it is, it is a science. It does take some practice. You can see, okay, so it, about 20 minutes after he stopped that first pass, he's hitting it again. So that, that's really not that much time out in the sun. He's hitting it with those finished blades. That makes it nice and smooth. As you can see, he's crossing his pattern, going the exact opposite way as the first time. Drops that trial down to the bottom of the, that pass. And then he comes back up right in the middle of them, right, just like that. That's helping keep that surface very level, very flat. We can kind of tell, you know, how do we tell when it's ready? You know, if you step on the surface with your sneaker and it leaves like a really wet impression, then that's not quite ready. If you step on the surface and the foot mark you leave is, is fairly dry, maybe just maybe just sticks to the bottom of your sneaker just a little bit, a little bit wet, then that's usually, we can tell that's ready to go. But if it's not ready, if it's too wet, you just don't want to keep hitting it over and over again. You want to let it dry and hit it when it's ready. And you see he's finishing up his second pass now. You can see he's trialing those door openings again. And if you watch him, he's going to have a little broom and he's got a little broom in his left hand. He's going to just put a nice little broom finish on that door opening. Now he's running the edger over it. And then that'll be done. He won't have to touch that again. You 
these are all the little things that you need to do to get a really nice looking power trial floor you know whether it's a garage slab or a house slab all these little details make a big difference So make sure, you know, if you're watching this and you want to learn how to finish a slab, you know, make sure you stay to the end so you can see each pass he does. It's going to take him multiple passes. And then it's, you're, we're also going to show you how we saw the expansion joints in here on the same day, right after we get done troweling. So you'll be able to check that out at the end of the video. Now you can see he's over there putting that broom finish on that other garage door opening, putting the edger on it, and then he's done with that part. We usually strip the forms the same day, too, guys. I mean, if you're doing this as a business and you're, let's say, you're 45 minutes or an hour away from the shop, you know, you just can't leave the forms on every job and then come back and make a, a separate trip just to pull the forms off. So the slab, after you get done power troweling it, the slab is plenty hard enough to pull those forms off. So we always strip the forms the same day we pour. You know, unless it's maybe really cold out for us, that would be sometime in November, December, you know, January, February. But typically, we don't pour too many outside on days like that. Then we'll leave them on. But in the summertime, we strip them. All right, so Luke's on his third pass now, or his second finish pass. He's getting in front of those doorways. And then he's crossing his pattern again, doing it the same way he did the first time. You know, work his way right back. You know, notice how he works from the sun into the shade. Because that sun part's drying a lot faster than the shade. You know, if he starts walking in that shade, and his footprints are really wet, then he, he'll just leave the shade pot and just hit the sun pot. Sometimes it dries, the shade pot will dry fast enough so you can hit both. But at the very least, you gotta blend in that edge where the sun and the shade are, just to make it so it looks nice when you're all done. That power trial, you know, the way that works is when you start it up, you, you got to hang on to that thing really good. Otherwise, it's going to want, the handles are going to want to start spinning. So you, you just want to have the throttle up just a little bit when you start it. If you got a Honda motor on yours, then it's probably going to start on the first pull. It's probably going to start pretty easy. But make sure you hang on to it. And then in order to run it, you know, when you push down, it's going to go to the, want to go to the right. And then you lift up on the handles that'll go to the left. Kind of like similar to a floor buffer if you've ever run a floor buffer, but that's how you make these things work. Push down, it goes to the right. Lift up, it goes to the left. And it does take a little bit of getting used to to run it. You're going to fight it a little bit with your body. But once you get used to running it, you can, like Luke right there, you can run it with one hand really easy. You know, if you guys just learning about this, I got a, a course down in the description you guys can get. You check that course out, it'll teach you how to do all this stuff.
All right, so he's on his fourth pass now, and like it said up there, it said he didn't even shut the power trial off. That's because that part in the sun now is is drying so fast that he just needs to go right back over it real quick. His edges are all down nice and smooth by now, but the, the paste on the surface of that part in the sun is so fine now that it just dries really fast. So he went right from his third hit to his fourth hit. And you can see he's, he's blending that shade edge in, but he's not going all the way to the building over there. So he's leaving that shade pot over by the building and he'll wait another hit before he hits that again. Let me know down in the comments, guys, how many of you guys have, have run power trials? And, you know, how many of you guys, if, you, if you've run one, do you rent it? Do you own it? And then how many of you guys do this for a living? Or are you just doing this for your own garage? And that'll help me gear some of my next videos. All right, so Luke's on his fifth pass now. As you saw, it was about five minutes after that fourth one. And I don't know if you can tell, but that out in the sun, it's, it's starting what we call shine out or it's getting kind of burnt out. Everybody has their own little term for it. We usually call it shined out. It's starting to see it's turning a little bit of black. So this fifth pass is pretty much finishing up that part in the sun. And then all he's got left, he's going to have to wait on that part in the shade a little bit and hit that a, a couple more times. So if, if this was all in the sun now, if that gra other garage wasn't there, then this would be it. It would be done, power trialed. And he could start sawing it after. But because of that part in the shade, I mean, this is what we deal with sometimes. We really deal with this a lot in the fall when the sun starts going down and it doesn't get up as high there's usually a lot more shade on floors that we that we try to finish especially if they're inside an eight-foot foundation All right, so now what he's doing, you can see he's measuring out the centers of each side, getting ready to saw in, saw in the control joints.
you know, you'd ask yourself, do you really need to saw those in? Well, most slabs, most concrete's going to crack, guys. It's just, yeah, it's just the nature of the beast. And for us as a business, you know, we want to try to control those cracks. Now, you may not want the saw joints if it's just your own slab. You may not have to put them in. As long as you're okay with looking at maybe a little shrinkage crack. Because nine times out of ten, that thing's going to crack somewhere. And for us, doing it for somebody else, you know, if it does crack, we want it to crack right in the saw joint. At least then it's nice and straight. And it just doesn't look as bad as a random crack just going anywhere it wants. So that's it. it took seven passes to completely finish the floor. Those last two were just for the shade. So he's going to get that trial up out of there. See how easy that crane makes it for him. And there's the saw we use. That's the Husqvarna 150. Takes a six inch blade, six and a half inch blade. Cuts down about an inch and a half. Right now they're just snapping the chalk lines. And that's about the easiest way to put in sawed expansion joints is with that saw right there. I'll have a link for one down in the description, guys, if you want to check them out. You know, they're, I mean, they're pricey, yes. They're like $2,200, $2,300, something like that. But they're fast, and, and you're done the same day. You don't have to go back the next day. So if, you, if you're doing these as a business, you know, if you're pouring floors every day, and you're sawing them, you don't want to have to go back the next day and saw your floors. You're better off just getting it done while you're there, biting the bullet, paying for the saw, and it's going to make its money back in a matter of no time, really. I guys really like this saw. They, I mean, I had the, the electric one. I still have two of those. And we used, we used that one for years and years, and we finally broke down and bought this one. And they much prefer this one over the electric one. For them, it's just no cord, no power you got to worry about. You just start it up and go. You see, got, they got the boards all stripped, got them loaded on the truck. Luke's got one more saw joint to put in there, and then, and then this slab's done. Well, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the little bell notification. I come out with a couple videos a week. If you like this video, if it gave you some value, then give it a thumbs up. That helps me in the, in the YouTube algorithm. It'll just get it out to more people so more people can see my videos. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next video.